Good morning, and thank you all for joining us today for Active Doctors Online Preventative Care Through Education webinar series. I would like to begin by providing you with some information on who ADO is. ADO is a global health tech partner to employers, consumers, and providers with a complete suite of telemedicine solutions to save money, time, and even lives through online access to personal health information, expert second medical opinions, and e-consultations. ADO helps its members become better prepared with easy access to the right information and medical experts so that they can make informed, cost-effective choices for preventative care and for unforeseen medical situations and emergencies. All our services are HIPAA compliant. Our personal health records are interoperable with electronic medical records and they are accessed through username and password and shared with only who the patient chooses to share them with. ADO provides our members with three basic solutions. The first being online personal health records, which give you easy and secure access to all of your medical records. The second being online second medical opinions, which are second expert medical opinions from over 1800 specialists, and they can be given in as fast as 48 hours. All our specialists are board certified and rank in U.S. News and World Report top 50 practitioners. Our third service are e-consultations, which basically provide a virtual doctor's visit with your primary care physician. They save you time and money by not having to go to the doctor's office and by scheduling an appointment from anywhere, anytime. Our October 2013 webinar is titled Lupus, Signs, Diagnosis, and Effects. Today we will learn the signs of lupus, how it is diagnosed, and the effects of lupus on the patient. I am very pleased to introduce our guest speaker for today, Dr. Howard Zahalski, our U.S. Medical Director since 2010. Dr. Zahalski received his bachelor's in medical degree from Brown University and completed his residency at John Hopkins University. He is the former chairman of the Department of Pediatric Care at Virginia Hospital Center. He holds multiple university teaching assignments, including clinical assistant professor at Georgetown University. Thank you very much for that introduction, Greta. Um, so today we're going to talk about lupus, which is otherwise known as systemic lupus erythematosus. Don't worry, there won't be a spelling test at the end of the webinar. We're going to start by talking with some of the effects of lupus on the body. To understand the effects of lupus, we have to understand what kind of disease lupus is. Lupus is in a category of diseases called connective tissue diseases. This is a subset of autoimmune diseases. Autoimmune diseases are when your body attacks itself for some reason. There are many autoimmune diseases with names like rheumatoid arthritis where your body attacks the joint. In the case of lupus, again, it is a connective tissue disease which means it's detecting the connective tissue between other cells. What does this mean to detect the connective tissue between other cells? Think of all of the parts of your body, all of your organs, as brick buildings in and of themselves. The lungs, for instance, are built out of lung cells. The heart is built out of heart cells. But you still need the mortar to hold all those cells together. That mortar in your body is created by what's called connective tissue cells, the cells between the cells that hold your body together. And lupus is one of the main diseases that attacks those. Because it connects these connective tissue cells and because these connective tissue cells are found throughout pretty much every organ in your body, lupus, as you can see on this slide, also can affect almost every part of your body. Here are just some of the parts of your body that it can affect. It can affect the lungs and cause pleural effusions. It can cause heart problems. It can cause skin problems. It can cause kidney problems. And it can cause joint and um, Raynaud's phenomenon, which is a blood vessel problem of the hand. Let's go on to the next slide. Here you can see the malar rash. This is one of the skin manifestations of lupus. And it is the most classic finding 
in true systemic lupus erythematosus. It's also known as the butterfly rash. I don't know how clearly you can see the slide, but what you see is a butterfly-shaped redness that is on the cheeks and extends to the bridge of the nose and then down the other cheek. It's also worth noting that the person who is in the picture, while you can't identify them, appears to be a young woman. This is particularly notable because lupus and most other connective tissue diseases tend to have a propensity for young women as their favorite targets. We don't know exactly why, but that group seems to be at the highest risk for not only lupus, but other connective dish tissue diseases and several other autoimmune diseases as well. The Malar rash, again, is the most classic finding in the more serious type of lupus, the systemic lupus erythematosus. Let's go on to the next slide now. Here you have a different kind of rash known as the discoid rash. This can be a finding in the broader type of lupus, but also can be involved in a subset of lupus called discoid lupus, which tends to have a much more mild prognosis. Here you see humped, humped up circular lesions on the patient's back. They can also be on the extremities or even on the scalp. They are, can easily be mistaken for several other types of skin disease. They look a little bit like ringworm, and they also can be mistaken for psoriasis at times. But our most classically, this classic appearance is most likely to be discoid lupus. These two skin problems usually are not dangerous in and of themselves, and oftentimes don't progress. But there are some certainly much more serious problems that can arise with lupus, as we'll see on the next slide. Here you have a microscopic picture of somebody's kidneys. That circular area in the center is what's called a glomerulus. This is the work part of the kidney where all of your blood is filtered and the poisons that accumulate in your body every day are filtered out and shed into your urine. You can see there are a couple of arrows pointing to some exceptionally red area, although the whole thing is kind of purplish. There's a brighter purple in a couple of areas which are labeled hyaline thrombus. When your body attacks your kidneys, it causes this waxy buildup to occur in the filtration system of your kidneys, this hyaline thrombus. The best way to imagine it is imagine what would happen if you took hot wax and slowly over days, weeks, months, and years started to pour it down your drain. Eventually, as it cools going through your drain pipes, it will start to build up along the drain pipes and cause your drains to back up and your sinks to stop working. Well, in this case, the same thing happens. This waxy buildup of this chemical called hyaline starts to clog the kidneys, prevents them from filtering the blood, which is their job, and over time can lead to kidney failure. All right, let's go on to the next slide. There are many, many different organs that lupus can affect. And as a result, we have created this criteria for lupus, because lupus can at times be hard to diagnose. There are a lot of things that can affect the lungs. There are a lot of things that can affect the joints. There are even a lot of things that cause funny rashes, as we mentioned. So what are the criteria for lupus? Well, I'm not going to just read you the slide. But here's the list of 11 things that you have to have some of in order to be qualified as lupus. Some of them are blood tests, such as anti-nuclear antibodies um, and hematological and immunological findings on blood tests. Four of them are skin things. There's the malar rash we discussed. There's the discoid rash that we discussed, as well as photosensitivity, people who are exceptionally prone to getting rashes in the sun, as well as oral ulcers, painful ulcers on the inner parts of your cheek and gums. There are also the organ system problems that you can get. The arthritis that we talked on briefly, serositis, which includes um, irritation of the lining around your heart and lung leading to fluid buildup, which can literally crush those organs from the outside in, as well as the kidney problems, and finally, even neurological and brain disorders such as seizures or psychosis that can result from irritation of the lining around the brain. In order to have lupus, 
you have to have at least four of these. Now this makes lupus a little bit of a challenging diagnosis. I like to tell medical students when I train them that you can pretty much say anyone has lupus if you try hard enough. For instance, some of the hematological disorders associated with lupus are not uncommon even in the general population. And a 79-year-old who has arthritis and maybe has had canker sores at some point in their life, with the right findings on their blood test, can have three of the four, um, three of the four criteria very easily. But in the right clinical picture, a combination of four of these is diagnostic of lupus. Let's go on to the next slide. So how do we decide if someone actually has lupus when they meet the criteria? Well, there are some findings that can't be mimicked by any other disease. Here you see a speckled pattern of an examination by, by special fluoroscopic techniques of somebody's connective tissue cells. What are we looking at here? Well, we have certain stains that look for your body's attack on certain parts of cells. In particular, lupus just doesn't attack the connective tissue cells in general. It particularly attacks their nucleus. The nucleus is the brain of the cell where your DNA is stored. And it attacks the area around the DNA in a particular way. So when you give certain stains to detect your body attacking itself and then shine certain colored fluorescent lights on them, it will show up this specific speckled pattern in the nucleus, which is almost diagnostic of lupus. There are other diseases which have other patterns. Some won't light up the nucleus at all. Some will have a smooth, even distribution of stain over the nucleus. And a few others will even cause a ring to appear around the outside of the nucleus. But this speckled pattern is very classic for lupus. All right, on to the next slide. So why do we get this speckled pattern? Well, as I said, the nucleus of your cell is where the DNA is stored. Every cell contains DNA. Every cell actually contains enough DNA to, if read correctly, build a whole new person. All of your body's DNA is replicated in each and every cell of your body, with the exception of red blood cells that don't actually have a nucleus. Now, all that DNA takes a lot of space. And if it was, for instance, a piece of string, that piece of string would be very, very long. So how do we store string when we need to make it more compact to sell in a store? We wind it around something, a spool of thread. And your body does exactly the same thing. It takes your DNA in each cell and winds it around something called a histone. And this is a picture of the histone. The brownish, tannish line thing is actually your DNA being wound around these bluish, reddish, purplish blobs, which are the histones or spools. This allows us to make the DNA more compact and to squeeze it into those nuclei that we were talking about. It is actually these histones that are being attacked by lupus. Why does your body decide to attack its own histones? We don't fully understand that. If we did, we'd be able to cure lupus. But, all, but what we do know is that this is what's being attacked by lupus. Because of this, we have a few blood tests that are very specific for lupus. They have names like anti-Rho and anti-La. Rho and La are two specific types of histones found in connective tissue cells. And if you have positive tests for anti-Rho or anti-La in the right patient with the right symptoms, you can be pretty sure that you have a case of lupus. Now I want to take a second without switching the slide to go over some of the treatments of lupus. We don't have any cure for lupus, but what we do have is medications that can reduce your immune system. Now what a horrible idea you might think. Why would we want to shut down our immune system? Well, it is actually your immune system that is attacking your own body in lupus and many other autoimmune and connective tissue diseases. So in order to treat lupus, we actually have to reduce your immune system. The medications that we have that do that, the most common medications are called steroids. Now these are not the Barry Bonds, Mark McGuire muscle building steroids. They're actually a different class of steroids 
that actually reduce inflammation in your body. There's also another class of drugs that are called immune-modulating drugs, which mean they're not steroids, but they do the same thing. They reduce your immune system. They can be very effective at putting the dangerous consequences of lupus, such as the brain co complications or the kidney damage, into remission. However, as you can imagine, they do have a lot of side effects. By reducing your immune system, you're going to be more susceptible to a variety of other diseases. In addition, steroids can raise your blood pressure, raise your cholesterol, and cause diabetes. But when you have a case of active lupus that is attacking your kidneys, your heart, your lung, and your brain, sometimes you have to tolerate certain side effects in order to treat the underlying disease. All right, let's go on to the next slide. So at this point, that's all I wanted to talk about in particular about lupus, but if anyone has any questions, I would be happy to take them at this time. All right, as there's no questions, I do want to point out one last time that lupus patients do end up on a lot of medications between brain complications, lung complications, and kidney complications, as well as the medicines needed to fight lupus in general, the, which have a lot of side effects. Patients on loop, with lupus can end up on a lot of medications. This is where Active Doctors Online's PHR can be particularly helpful. Someone with lupus may be seeing many doctors and have many people changing their medication all at the same time. By keeping track of all of your medications with Active Doctors PHR, none of your doctors will be concerned that they're starting a medication that may interact with one of your other doctor's medications. It's all just a way that you can be a more active participant in your health care. Greta, I'm going to hand it back to you. Thank you, Dr. Sahowski, for that very informative lecture. As it is, um, October is Lupus Awareness Month. It's also, you know, very imperative to know a lot of the details that were discussed today so that, you know, if you know, do know somebody that is affected with lupus, you know, you know exactly what they're going through. Um, and of course, the first step in preventive care is education. So we really appreciate your help with everything today. I would like to encourage everyone to try our free 30-day trial. You can do this by logging into activedoctorsonline.com, click join now, it should be on the top right of the website, then enter promo code active doctors and you will be prompted to join whether as an individual or a family or any of the other choices. As Dr. Sahowski discussed, it's it's very imperative to own your personal history, your personal medical history. Um, I want to put emphasis on medical history because Active Doctors Online does not only offer, you know, your latest doctor's visit or your latest medical records, it offers your entire, can offer your entire medical history. For further information, please feel free to visit our website, activedoctorsonline.com, or you may call 888-51-ACTIVE. Again, it's 888-51-ACTIVE. You can also email us with questions or any other um, further comments at contact at activedoctors.com. Be sure to like our Facebook page, our Twitter. You can also see more videos and previous webinars on YouTube. And we're also on LinkedIn. We also regularly update our blog, ownmyphr.com, which includes up-to-date medical news and valuable information on health and wellness. Thank you so much for joining us today, and thank you, Dr. Sahalski, again for our informative lecture on lupus.